You reached under the seat for? Um, a knife. I always kept a knife in the hot car for the crazies and stuff because you can't travel with a gun. How this interview with O.J. Simpson hasn't gotten more attention over the years, I have no idea. Most people don't even know that it exists. But in 2006, he did an interview to support a book that he was trying to release. It was a hypothetical of if he had killed Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson. That book was never really released, but he goes through an entire interview talking about the hypotheticals that he discusses in that book. And the chilling and disturbing part is his casualness to it all. He laughs throughout the interview, and it's just truly disturbing. Why don't you tell me what might have happened on the night of June 12th, 1994? <laughs> and let's just walk yeah, through the night. I, well, first of all, it's, this is very difficult for me to do this. Uh, it was very difficult for me because it's hypothetical. I know and I accept the fact that people are going to feel whatever way they're going to feel. <laughs> he starts out by talking about this person named Charlie, his accomplice or whatever. And I've done a little bit of research on this to try to find out who this Charlie person could be. And what I found is it could be one of two different people. The first one being his son, because many people believe that his son is the actual killer and OJ was just trying to help cover it up. That's a conspiracy theory um, that doesn't have very much evidence behind it. And the other one could be Charlie is the voice inside of OJ Simpson's head. He's given it the name Charlie and made it into two different people, but it's really just OJ himself. <laughs> Uh, this guy, Charlie, shows up, the guy who I had recently become friends with, and uh, I don't know why you had been by Nicole's house, but it told me you wouldn't believe what's going on over there. And uh, and I remember thinking, well, whatever's going on over there has got to stop, right? We go over, get into Bronco and go over. Let, let's just go back and do the details. Where did you I'm park? i the detail. You park in, in the... In the hypothetical, go in the alley. Right. You park in the alley. Yeah. You put on a wool cap and gloves. Uh, in the hypothetical, I put on a cap and gloves. Right. Yeah. And um, you reached under the seat for? Um, a knife. I always kept a knife in the hot car for the crazies and stuff because you can't travel with a gun. And I remember Charlie saying, you ain't bringing that. And I didn't, right? But I believe he took it. Charlie took the knife? Yeah. You go through the back gate? Yes. And I could see that it appears like Nicole had, fly, I had candles all the time. She really did to keep her overhead down, I think. And music was on. And uh, while I was there, a guy shows up. You know? So Ron Goldman comes in the back gate. Yeah. A, a, a guy that I really didn't recognize. I, I may have seen him around, but I really didn't recognize him to be anyone. And, uh, and I, in the mood I was in, I started having words with him. It's at this point where it seems like O.J. Simpson could be losing a grip on it being a hypothetical. And it feels more like he's remembering events from that night. He says to you, I just came by to return a pair of glasses. Judy left them at the restaurant. Yeah, words to that effect, yes. And, and uh, he was I don't on... know if I believe it or didn't believe it. Uh, it was pretty much immaterial because, you know, uh, I was more concerned about everything that, that everything that was going on. You know, and uh, was uh, fed up with it, I guess. And uh, you get into a fight. Nicole comes out. And verbal, a verbal, a verbal fight. fight. Got a little loud, and by that time, uh, uh, Nicole had come out, and we started having words about who is this guy, why is he here, what's going on. And, and she says, "This is my house. Get that the f out yeah, of here." Yes, and. Uh, which I didn't like because, once again, this is the same person. And if you read the book, you'll see some things that happened in the two weeks leading up to this that were uh, very, very irritating, you know. Uh, and I think Charlie had followed this guy in, one make sure it was no problem, and he brought the knife. As things got heated, uh, I just remember Nicole fell and hurt herself. And uh, this guy kind of got into a karate thing. And I said, well, you think you can kick my ass? And I remember I grabbed a knife. I do remember that portion, taking a knife from Charlie. And to be honest, after that, I don't remember. Except I'm standing there, and there's all kind of stuff around. And um, um, 
What kind of stuff? Butt and stuff around. You know, we, you know, I hate to say this, but this is not even that. Right, right. I know we got to back up again. Right. It's <laughs> okay. Know, I want to back this up. This is hard. This is this hard. Is hard. To, yeah, I know. Yeah. I want to back it's up hard to... to try to make people think that I'm a. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, you wrote in the book, I had never seen so much blood in my life. Mm, yes. Covered. You're covered. The scene. Can you describe yeah, it? I, I, it's hard for me to describe it, I'm telling you. I don't think any two people could be. Um, Murdered the way they were without everybody been covered in blood. And of course, I think we've all seen the grisly pictures after. So, yeah, I think everything was covered, would have been covered in blood. This next part, pay close attention to how he phrases his answer to the question about the glove. It seems like he's more frustrated with himself that he made such a careless mistake. You write about removing a glove before taking the knife from Charlie. Uh, you know, I had no conscious uh, memory of doing that, but obviously I must have because they found a glove there. And blacking out. Have you ever blacked out before? Not to my knowledge. No. No. Of course, you... uh, of course, if something like this would take place in anybody's life, if it were to happen, I would imagine it's something that you would probably automatically uh, have trouble wrapping your, your mind around it. It was horrible. It was absolutely hard. And this last part, more of the same. It's more like he's remembering rather than discussing a hypothetical. In the book, you describe taking off your shoes, your pants, and your shirt and dropping it in a bundle. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. And do you remember what happened? Because what are you going to do with it? <laughs> you know, somebody's got to get rid of, uh, as you may have called during the trial, is that wear the bloody clothes. So somebody had to get rid of the bloody clothes. Right. And you had left your keys and wallet in your pants pocket and you had to go back and get it? I, you know, to be honest, uh, I, I think, I, I know that to be true, yes. Yes. Um, and Charlie is hysterical, sc screaming, Jesus Christ, RJ, Jesus Christ. And you tell him to yeah, shut up. Yeah, he's in a panic. He was in a panic, and I'm telling him to shut up. Let's get out of here. So you get back in the car. You take in your clothes, put them yeah, in the bundle. and drove back, and, and it parked a block away because I knew the limo would be there and came across the backyard through the two tennis courts and, you know, came through the house. So you went through the neighbors? Neighbors, yeah. He had a tennis court, then I had a tennis court. And you go into the house, and what happens in the house? I, 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 I ran upstairs to take a shower. I actually ran upstairs and took some of my bags and came back downstairs and put them out front. 